You're watching Al Jazeera. We're breaking into our regular programming to take you to Sudan, where opposition and military leaders have just signed a, an initial political accord in Khartoum. This relates to their power-sharing agreements. Let's see if we can cross over to our uh, correspondent, Hiba Morgan. Hiba Morgan uh, is uh, across the border for us. She's monitoring developments over the border in Ethiopia's capital. Uh, Hiba, we've just seen um, that document being signed. Can you tell us more about what's happening there uh, over in Sudan? Well, hello, for starters, people have to understand that there are two documents. It's not a single document. What has been signed a few minutes ago in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum, is the political document, which involves the power sharing between the opposition coalition, known as the Forces of Freedom and Change, and the ruling military junta, which is the Transitional Military Council. Now, that agreement, which has been signed, specifies that there will be five members from each side in the sovereign council, which will effectively be the presidency of the country. And there will be members nominated from the uh, forces uh, of uh, freedom and change to the uh, uh, to the executive council which will be uh, made up of ministers but it doesn't state how uh, this uh, transitional government will be run it doesn't ex explain what roles the sovereign council and the executive council will have now that will be the, uh, defined in the constitutional declaration which according to the uh, AU envoy will be signed on Friday afternoon in Khartoum OK, now, the, the, the core of that deal, um, uh, the, this power-sharing deal between uh, the military and the, the opposition movement, it, it really does lie in that second document, does it not? Uh, that constitutional declaration. What more can you tell us about this? Well, yes, indeed. Now, the constitutional declaration is going to be the core of the transitional agreement. It's going to state exactly what role the Sovereign Council would play, if it's going okay. to have a role at all in terms of nominees. OK, Heba, I'm sorry to cut you off. We, are, we do understand that they are speaking to us live from Khartoum. Let's have a listen in. Witness the signing of the document. It is a huge achievement representing a very decisive step towards an all-inclusive agreement among all the forces in Sudan. It ushers a new era and paves the way for the upcoming step, which, as mentioned by Dr. Ibrahim a few minutes ago, the uh, consideration, deliberation and restatement of the constitutional document for the transitional period. It is a very glorious moment and we seize the opportunity to extend all appreciation to both the delegations and the respective heads of the delegations, as they have demonstrated a great deal of patriotism, responsibility, and we seize the opportunity as well to extend all appreciation to the delegates of both the teams for the wit, expertise, know-how and knowledge they have demonstrated along with their respective leaders. Once again, and to conclude, it is a huge, achieve, a huge achievement. And we thank the supporting teams who have pr provided all assistance to the mediators. We, they have provided all possible assistance to us as mediators, especially Dr. Ahmed Abi Ahmed, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, for the initiative started by him and to his will educated, well-cultured, the thinker, his advisor, Mr. Mahmoud, who has been working closely with me in absolute patience and dedication. I also thank the ambassador and representative of both the African Union and Ethiopia. They have been both 
cornerstones in the entire process. And above all, we should thank the representatives of the media. Thank you for keeping up with this defining moment of this course. And I appeal to you once again, as I have always done, to maintain dedication and devotion to peace and steer away from any word or act which may drive a wedge between the people. I pray to God Almighty to guide us forward and make this defining step a foundation stone for a bright future that will culminate the glorious revolution of the people. In the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful, may praise and eternal glory be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the local and international media, it has been an honor for us to act as mediators representing the African Union and the Republic of Ethiopia, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. It has been an honor to be true partners in this defining moment in the modern history of the Sudan, this great country. And this great people. It is time for the Sudanese people to come out of the siege laid around them and rid itself of poverty and to be cleared from the blacklist, the alleged blacklist of terrorism. This great people deserve at this defining moment on this historic day, deserve all appreciation. I wouldn't give credit only to the negotiating teams, but I would say the entire one body of the Sudanese people with its great army represented by the Transitional Military Council on the one hand and their brave honest, noble men of the Freedom and Change Forces. I congratulate the Sudan. I congratulate Africa. And I, to the Ethiopian uh, media, I would say, and I was speaking the local language. It is a great moment that the people of the Sudan have reached this historic moment. The parties, I would not say the different entities of the Sudan, but a unit, a united front that represents the gallant army of the Sudan, the Transitional Military Council, and of course, the revolutionary youth, intellectuals, pioneers who have taken to the streets to stand for democracy, for change in this country. The Sudan deserves this moment. God bless the Sudan. God bless the Sudan and God bless Africa. I would also like to thank the chairperson of the African Union's Commission, 
Dr. Musa Faki for his efforts in allowing us to be part of this initiative and for the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, a man of vision, a man who believes in Africa, a man who stood for democracy in Ethiopia. I thank you. In the name of God, in the name of Allah, the Almighty, the Merciful, it is a historic moment for the Sudanese people to stand together from all walks of life and each and every corner of the country, north, south, east and west, celebrating this memorable day honoring the memory of the fallen martyrs who have sacrificed their lives for the sake of their own country. We honor the memory of those fallen martyrs who, whose spirits are hovering among us. They cannot be forgotten. They have paved the way. They have paid the price in their blood. The revolution has made a radical change, not only in the Sudan, but in the entire region. That's why it has been addressed by thinkers, writers, leaders, politicians, and leaders worldwide. We hope that this revolution will achieve the change we have all been aspiring to. The youth have demonstrated a great deal of responsibility, ethics and moralities. They have been characterized and described to have transcended above tribalism, provincialism, or any other form of discrimination. And those who have paid the price in their own lives have contributed to this revolution. And on this occasion, we wouldn't forget the Sudanese women we salute the Sudanese women who have contributed to this achievement. They have taken great leaps in study, employment, and by this revolution they have come or become the gem in the crown above our head. Women are half of our society, yet following the revolution, women have added a new dimension and now they represent three quarters of our society. The young youth, the cornerstone of the revolution, have demonstrated a great deal of consciousness and awareness and they have demonstrated a great deal of responsibility and by their awareness i'm certain we will have a great new generation that will take the lead we wouldn't fail to thank all the parties and members who have contributed to this achievement the african partners who have been siding with us. They have demonstrated and exerted great efforts. They have proven to be working to the interest of Sudanese. Professor Imad and Ambassador Mahmoud and the Ambassador representative of the African Union and the Ambassador of Ethiopia. We 
We also extend all thanks and appreciation to all those who have supported the revolution, the Sudanese people abroad, namely in Europe, the United States and Latin America and the third world. Sudanese citizens have never cut ties with, the, with their roots here in Sudan. And the revolution have proven that the Sudanese people all over the world have been interacting and contributing to the revolution, and they have provided a great deal of support to the revolutionaries, financial, political, and at the media levels. We are ushering into a new era. We should rely on our own selves, steer away from any rift or division. Sudan is for all the Sudanese people. Those who have signed the document today are part and parcel of our social fabric. The upcoming government will be a government for all the Sudan and for all the Sudanese, without any discrimination. Each and every citizen must feel freedom. We have suffered enough from totalitarian dictator regimes who have enslaved the people and devoured our riches. Freedom cannot be partitioned, but freedom for us, for all. It is clear from the attitude of the signatories to this document that they will address and deal with all the Sudanese people on equal footing, allowing each and every citizen to contribute in rebuilding our country, which we should all dovetail efforts and join hands. Thank you, and may God bless you. In the name of Allah, the Almighty, the Merciful, eternal praise on God to Almighty and peace and blessings to his Prophet Messenger Muhammad. Professor Muhammad Labad, the AU envoy, Ambassador Mahmoud Gadid, the Ethiopian mediator, uh, the Ethiopian ambassador of Ethiopia to Sudan, the ambassador of the African Union to the Sudan, representatives of the political forces of the Freedom and Change Alliance. Ladies and gentlemen and representatives of the media, may God's peace and blessings be with you. It is with pleasure on this morning to bring the good news to the Sudanese people that we have initialed the political agreement document between the Transitional Military Council and the Freedom and Change Alliance. It is a hysteric moment in the history of the Sudanese people and their journey of struggle. It ushers a new era of partnership between the brave armed forces, the rapid support forces and all other security apparatuses, and our partners in the Freedom and Change Alliance and the Sudanese people. This document is a fruit that culminated the efforts that have been exerted for a long time by the people and we as well. We honor the memory of the fallen martyrs and we salute the bereaved mothers, Sudanese women, young youth, the young youth, the fuel of the revolution, and we pray to God Almighty to grant speedy recovery to the wounded. And we salute all partners who have contributed to this agreement, namely the African Union, Ethiopia, the friendly, dear neighbor, and other friendly and Arab states, friendly states worldwide. And I conclude by saying, may God's peace and blessings 
be upon you all. Okay, well, that looks like uh, we've heard from the main parties uh, in that ceremony. Just for viewers who are just joining us, we're bringing you live pictures from Khartoum where uh, representatives from the Sudanese military and the Sudanese opposition have just signed uh, the political uh, declaration. Uh, we heard during that uh, brief press, uh, those press statements, uh, really, that two documents have been negotiated, the political declaration and the constitutional declaration. It's the first of those that has been signed now. Uh, we're expecting a second document uh, to be signed on Friday. Uh, we heard there uh, four speeches. Uh, the final one, though, uh, came from uh, Mohammed Hamdan Daglo, the uh, vice president of the uh, ruling uh, military junta. Um, he's uh, known as Hamedti, commander of... Uh, paramilitary forces. He was among those paying tribute uh, to those uh, who had helped sign and negotiate those two documents. Uh, controversially there, he uh, spoke of honouring the memory of the fallen martyrs, those who had fuelled the revolution in uh, his words. We also heard a lot of praise uh, uh, being paid to both sides there. Uh, that, of course, from the AU envoy to Sudan who was speaking, who said it is time for the Sudanese people to emerge from the siege laid around them, paying tribute to the Sudanese people who uh, the AU envoy to Sudan said deserve this moment. Uh, certainly many talking of the historic progress being made today. Let's uh, find out more about that from uh, Al Jazeera's Hiba Morgan, who uh, joins us now from neighbouring uh, Ethiopia. Uh, Hiba, just give us a sense of your thoughts here. You've been covering the events in Sudan for us for quite some time. Just how significant is it that this, uh, this one document has been signed today? Well, hello, for starters, the two sides have been negotiating to try to reach an agreement since former President Omar al-Bashir was ousted in April. Now, uh, the talks have been suspended several times. Talks collapsed after June 3rd when the military attacked uh, the uh, pro-democracy city in front of the army headquarters in the capital, Khartoum. So the fact that they were able to come together and sign a document uh, more than three months after they started negotiating is quite significant. But let's remember that this deal that has been signed, Hala, is just the starting point. It's it basically says that the two sides will be sharing uh, power during the transitional period. It, it says that the uh, forces of freedom and change and the transition military council will be having five members each in the sovereign council, which is effectively the presidency during the transitional period, and that the uh, forces of freedom and change will be the ones nominating members to the executive council. What it doesn't discuss, however, is the roles of those two councils. That is up to the constitutional declaration, which, uh, as we heard from the AU envoy and from others, will be signed on Friday afternoon in Khartoum. Um, we're still expecting that, that, that to go ahead, but sh should that go ahead as planned, the signing of this constitutional declaration, I mean, that surely will be a very significant moment, given the level of upheaval we have seen in Sudan over the past few months. Yes, indeed, that will be the uh, significant moment, perhaps more significant than today's moment, because it will be defining the roles of those two councils. They're yet to figure out uh, what the sovereign council would do, what its, what its mandate is, uh, how much, how much power.